BlackBerry.com. Hello everyone, Brian here with CrackBerry.com. What I'd like to show in this video is a walkthrough of the BlackBerry native coding environment. At the time of this recording, version 10.2 beta was the most recent version, so that's what I'll be showing here. So let's go ahead and launch our SDK. Before it fully launches, it asks us where we'd like to load our workspace from. What I have is just a folder on the desktop called Weekend Coder, so let's go ahead and launch that workspace. That workspace is where your projects will be saved and loaded from once the SDK launches. So now that the SDK is fully launched, you see that the screen is broken up into various windows. The front and center one is a welcome screen. Over here we have our project explorer. This is where our different projects or app or soon to be apps I suppose will be housed. Down below that is the components window. Down at the very bottom is our console view. Up on the top right we have an outline and below that is the QML properties. So I believe the first time you launch this IDE you'll come to a setup wizard. However, I've already done that a while back. So in case it doesn't launch or you accidentally closed out, you can bring that back up by going to Window Preferences, BlackBerry, and run your setup wizard. I bring this up because you'll want to do this for sure, and I've already done it as well. Here's where you'll set up your device, register your sign-in keys, create a debug token, and also connect to a simulator or if you have an actual BlackBerry developer device or retail device, you can use that to connect to Momentix to test your apps. But since I've already done it, I don't need to do it again. It's a pretty generic setup wizard, very easy to use, and should get you all set up. So let me close out of this and go back to our main screen. So this welcome screen that loads is an improved version from 10.0 or 10.1 if you had used either one of those in the past. What we have here is links to the setup or support forums and documentation. They're exactly what you'll see if you were to visit the BlackBerry website. However, the sample apps is a bit different and actually really cool. So once it loads, it'll be all the official BlackBerry apps that you can take a look at as well as you can download and import them directly into your environment. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll, I'll show you. And you see that we now have it over here in our Project Explorer and it pulls in all the code and we can play around with it and all that. So that's a really nice feature. Everything else in the welcome screen is some what's new with with your version as well as some other helpful links and news about Cascades and the developing environment. And then last thing, up top there's a new toolbar from previous versions as well. It's a slimmed down version of the toolbar rather than having a bunch of buttons that you'd never really use. Up top there's the build, run, stop. Uh, you can pick your active project. The current active project is that sample that I just pulled in. And then over here you can connect to a simulator or a device. And As you can see I have my Dev Alpha currently connected. So let's go ahead and create a new project so we can see a bit more about the different windows. So go to File, New, and you can create a new BlackBerry project. You can choose between Cascades or 
just native code. I would like to do cascades. There's four templates that you can use. Standard empty project will just create a hello world app. A list view will give you a generic list view. Tab pane and navigation pane will set you up with that navigation type. I typically like to use the standard empty project. That way I can customize it any way I'd like. So I'll go ahead and click next. Here you can name your project as well as pick a location where it'll be saved. By default it'll pick the location that we chose when we first launched the IDE. Click Next. And the last thing is your API level. So if you wanted to create an app that definitely worked on 10.0, you can choose 10.0 and it the environment will only allow you to use features that are available in 10.0 uh, or 10.1 and if you had 10.2 installed or any higher version you'd be able to choose that as well. So let's go ahead and pick 10.1. Go ahead and click finish. This will now create our new project. We had called it Cascades Project and when it creates the project the console will build it for the first time and it will automatically load your main.qml file. Your main.qml file, like I said, it, with it being the standard empty project, will just be hello world. So we have some QML code with a label that says hello world. Uh, let's go a bit over the files that were created when we made this new project. What you'll mostly be dealing with is your files within your assets folder and your source folder. Your assets will house things like your QML files, JavaScript files, images, sounds, any other files you have that are not C++. Your C++ files will be in your source folder and every project starts with a main CPP and an application UI CPP. The next few files that you need to concern yourself with, and I'll go ahead and open them, the bar descriptor and the dot profile. So in the bar descriptor XML is where you can set your package name your package version and your package build under your first general tab. Also, here's where you'll ultimately run your your build that you'll export and create a bar file for deployment to Blackberry World. The next tab contains things such as setting your icon, setting your splash screen. Uh, you can set your orientation of it auto-oriented, landscape or portrait, and here's where you can define your permissions. So in the case of wanting to have BlackBerry Messenger integration you would go ahead and check that permission. And when this la app launches on somebody's device they'll be asked if they would like to give the app permission to BlackBerry Messenger. The next two tabs you don't really use unless you're going to set localization with different languages. And then finally is the source tab where you can do pretty much everything in the previous tabs but with actual coding rather than drop downs and check boxes. So jumping over to the dot profile it will be named the same thing as your project name but then dot pro. Here's where you'll sometimes define libraries so in the case of say you wanted to use payment services you would define the platform library by typing in its its library name and it happens to be LBB platform. So that's pretty much all you'll use the dot profile 
for. Just be aware that's how you declare libraries. Now we're back into our main QML to go over a couple of these other windows such as the components and the QML properties. Easiest to see what goes on with the QML prop or the the compo QML components by turning on the design view. So design view gives you a real time preview of what you're currently working on and you can either have your code, your design split this way or that way. I typically like to use this and if you drag it over it'll resize in real time. And I like to do something like that so I can see what's going on as well as see a good amount of my code. And like I said this will update in real time. But back over to the components this shows you the stock Cascades components that you can pull into your coding environment. And you can literally click, drag, and drop into your code. And it'll add that to your app. And then once you're inside the, in this case, a toggle button, your QML properties will give you the properties that you can change of in this case a toggle button and if I move my cursor to inside a label it'll now be things that you can change about a label such as the font and the toggle button I can set the default to be checked or unchecked and this is true for every QML component so again container you'll see different container properties so I can change the layout to move things around and stuff like that. The window above the QML properties is the outline and this will give me a tree of what's going on in my app so I can see all the components without having to sift through the code. Now say you're ready to complete your project, test it on the, your simulator or your device. So here's where we'll go back up to our toolbar and we'll go ahead and build our project. When we build our project, we'll see that the console runs through the build, lets us know if we have any errors in our code, and tells us how long it took to build the project. And since I do have my dev alpha connected, go ahead and click play. It'll build the project again. I actually don't have a debug token set up on this dev alpha, so if I go ahead and create a new one, development mode set up, let me go ahead and put in my password, and it'll create a new debug token for my dev alpha. And even though you can't see it on the screen, it has launched the app on my dev alpha and I see exactly what's over here. Except I guess it would be using the dark theme and a dev alpha, which you can change in your QML preview. Um Going back to the toolbar, like I said, it's a slimmed down version. However, you can get back more of the buttons by going to Window, and you can turn on your advanced toolbar. I typically like to leave this one on, if nothing else, to have the Save All button, just because I'm a bit paranoid with my code, and I like to save very often in case the ID happens to crash on me, or the power goes out, or something like that. And one more thing, you can change your slim down toolbar by going to Window, Preferences, Blackberry, 
and then toolbar preferences and you can switch it from the three button with the tool switcher that you see to just three buttons which gets rid of that tool switcher or five buttons which gets you a debug, a profile, and a run release button. But I happen to like it like this, but it's all a matter of preference. Uh, that about does it for what all the Momentix native IDE for BlackBerry 10 app development. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.